So I hope that you have answered all the 10 questions within 10 minutes. So this is the AFCAD mock test series and we are going to see the solutions of the 10 questions which you have already seen. Okay, so let's see the solutions. Questions you will be seeing on board while explaining. Okay, the first question is the forbidden gap voltage for silicon material is dash. So this is asking the forbidden energy gap or the, uh, the gap between the the valence band and the conduction band. It is the energy gap. What is that for a silicon material? It is a theoretical question. You should be knowing that as by heart. Eg for a silicon is 1.21 EV. Okay. So from the options, correct answer is option D. Moving on to the second question. Let me remove this first question. Moving on to the second question. Which of these PN junction cara are not dependent on temperature? So the four options are PN junction characteristics out of which which is not dependent on temperature. A. Junction resistance. B. Reverse saturation current. C. Bias current. D. Barrier voltage. Okay, so as the temperature is increasing, the current will also increase. So the reverse saturation current and the bias current should be dependent on temperature. And also temperature is inversely proportional to voltage. So that is the, the voltage reduces as the temperature is increased. Okay, so the other cara uh, other than the voltage and the current should be temperature independent one. Okay, so the correct answer is A junction resistance is not dependent on the temperature. So the correct answer for second question is a junction resistance third question third question you can see on board question is as the temperature to the pn junction increases the current increased due to which of this factor okay that is as we are increasing the temperature uh, in the pn junction increases the current due to Due to what reason? Why the current is actually increasing when the temperature is increasing? So just before in this in the previous question, we have discussed that the temperature as uh, temperature is increasing, current is also decre increasing, voltage is decreasing, right? So you can write like this. Temperature is directly proportional to current and temperature is proportional to 1 by V for the PN junction, right? So now what is the reason for this? T is proportional to I. Why the current is increasing? A leakage in bias region no not due to leakage b electron hole pair c leakage in p and p junction no p region no uh, d leakage in n region no so the tem as the temperature is increasing we have generally studied as a basic thing of p n junction that when temperature is increasing the electrons will break the bond electron hole pairs are generated and due to this electron hole pair generation and recombination the current is increasing so that is actually happening when the temperature is increasing when the temperature increases the electrons get energy to the to break the bond the valence electrons they break the bond and become as free electrons due to this the current is increasing okay so correct answer for third question is option b electron whole pair due to which only the current is actually increasing mainly okay not due to leakage or anything so correct answer is option b moving on to the fourth question fourth question is from tunnel diodes recently we have done a detailed video on tunnel diode uh, actually quick revision and some questions i have included in that video okay so tunnel diodes are made up of dash that is what material we are using for making of tunnel diodes. A. Germanium and silicon. B. Aluminium, gallium, arsenide. C. Aluminium, gallium, indium, phosphide. D. Zinc. T. Okay. So the correct answer is germanium and silicon. Okay. And also the main materials that we are using is silicon, germanium and gallium arsenide. These are the three materials which we commonly use for making of tunnel diodes. Okay. Correct answer is option A in which gallium arsenide is not there. So, silicon and germanium. Okay, if the three options, I mean the three uh, uh, elements are given, silicon, germanium and gallium arsenide, then you have to choose that. Okay, 
Anyway, correct answer for fourth question is option A. Fifth question is from transconductance amplifiers. It's from transconductance amplifiers. A transconductance amplifier is also called dash. A current to voltage converter. B voltage to current converter. C resistor. D inductor. Correct answer is it is a current to voltage converter. It converts current to voltage. Okay. Correct answer for fifth question is option A. Sixth question is from JFET. Okay. So the question is. So in sixth question, the channel of JFET is between dash. So the, this is a very basic question. If you know the structure of JFET, you can answer this. Where the channel is present. We know that there are three terminals for a JFET. There is a gate. There is a drain. There is a source and which we, between these, which of these ter, uh, terminals the channel is present. Okay. So if you have seen the structure, it will be like this. The channel is this conducting channel and it is between drain and source. Let me read out the options for you. A gate and drain. No. B gate and source. No. C drain and source. Yeah, that's the correct answer, which is option C. Okay. So this is a structure of a just, I've just drawn a rough figure. There is a drain, there is a source and in between that there is a conducting channel which will get pinched off due to the nature of the gate voltage and VDS. Okay. So this is the structure. Correct answer is option C. Moving on to the sixth, sorry, seventh question. The seventh question is from analog electronics. Seventh question. The, min the maximum and minimum voltage across the diode D1 is dash. So there is a circuit given to you. You can see that there are two diodes, two capacitors and there is an input voltage. And what will be the output across D1? Okay, so the given circuit is a voltage doubler circuit. So if you know what is a voltage doubler, you can answer this question. So voltage doubler will produce the double of whatever voltage is given to the circuit. That will produce a double of it. Okay, so if VP... The input voltage is Vp sin omega t. So, the output will be 2 Vp, which is a maximum and minimum will be 0. So, correct answer is A, 2 Vp and 0 volt. Okay, correct option here is option A. Eighth question. Eighth question is from rectifiers. Okay, so the eighth question. In a half wave rectifier, the sine wave 50 sin 50t that is a sine wave given if the load is 1k 1k load resistor is used average dc power output is dash what is the output dc power average dc power so here the input given vi is equal to vm sin 50t omega t is 50t okay now vm is so the value is 50 so vm is equal to 50 now the output, average output DC power is, power is equal to Vm square by RL is the equation. Just substitute and find. Vm square is 50 into 50 by RL is 1k which is 1000. So the value obtaining is 2.5 volt. Sorry, 2.5 watt. Correct answer is option B. So there is a slight uh, variation in the options. Okay, so in the given question image, you can see the unit is volt. Okay, please read it as watts. There is a slight mistake. Okay, so uh, unit of power is watt only. So just read it as watts, not volt. Okay, so that's a mistake. Moving on to the ninth question. Ninth question is which of the following? Let me just remove this first. Okay. So the ninth question, which of the following is method used to model diode forward carrier? A. Iteration method, B. Graphical method, C. Constant voltage drop model, D. All of this. So all these methods we, we can use in order to depict the forward uh, IV carrier or forward carrier of a diode. Okay, so the correct answer is D. All the above. Okay, tenth question, which is the last question of this mock test. Tenth question is, in many application, a conducting diode is modeled as having a constant voltage drop, usually dash. A, 10, 
B point one, C point seven, D seven volt. So when we are doing numericals uh, in connection with diodes, and when we uh, find that the diode is forward biased, we we always assume that as a voltage source. And when it is reverse biased, normal diodes if you are using, we assume it as an open circuit, right? So this is reverse bias condition, and during the forward bias or conducting condition. We consider it as a voltage source, right? And also we assume that there is some voltage drop. There will be a voltage drop for a voltage source, right? Or a, it will be having a value. Okay. So what is the general value we take when the diode is assumed to be conducting or when it is in forward bias condition? So the value is zero point seven volt, right? Now we generally use. Silicon diode. So, when generally, even if it is not given in the question that it is a silicon diode, we normally take silicon diodes. But if it is germanium diode, then what is the voltage drop? This is that is zero point three volt. Okay. So, this is one important thing you should be knowing when a diode is conducting, we can replace that conducting diode with a voltage source, and that voltage is nothing but the built-in potential. That is the we know that the structure of a p-n junction diode is having a depletion layer, and in order to break the depletion layer, and in order to have conduction, we have to break the barrier, right? So we apply a barrier potential just opposite to that barrier, and that value is 0 0.7 for silicon and 0 0.3 for germanium. Very basics of diodes. All of this, all of people, all of the people will be knowing that. But anyway, I'm just telling it. For those people who don't know about forward bias condition and reverse bias condition, forward bias we take it as voltage source, and when it is not conducting or when it is in reverse bias, generally we take it as an open circuit. There is a break in that connection, or an open circuit is created. Okay, just know that. Okay. Anyway, the correct answer here is option D, which is zero point seven, and also in the question it is not given that it is a whether it is a silicon diode or a germanium diode. But most commonly, question it is not given that whether the diode is silicon or germanium. But most commonly, we'll be using only silicon diodes. So that's why the value is 0.7. Okay, correct answer here is option D, which is 0.7 volt. Okay, so these are the ten questions which I have included in this video. I really hope that you found this video useful. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with all the friends who's preparing for AFCAT examination. A lot of people is preparing for AFCAT examination, so that's why we are doing videos. For its preparation and also conducting mock tests. Okay, so the exam is happening on nineteenth and twentieth of September. So for all the people from triple branch and also EC and EI branch, commonly the the stream is electronics. Okay, so please do share it with all your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.